everybody. Welcome back. So I know the setup looks a little different today. Um, we are actually out at uh, the back building of my church. Um, I've got a class in a couple of hours, but I've been wanting to do this canvas for a while, but um, just really didn't have the space for it to dry and all that. So I brought it with me today to the church. That way I can sit here for the week before I can take it home. So this is a 24 by 36 level three artist loft gallery wraps heavy duty canvas. So this canvas is extremely deep and um, it is extra reinforced. So this is considered a professional grade canvas. And um, so yeah, it's, it's really big and really excited to do this. We are going to be doing a Dutch pour. So as you notice, the canvas is dual prep, black on one side, white on the other feather prepped. And we have the blow dryer over here. This is just a regular Con Air Cord Keeper 1875. And it is going to be, uh, we use high pressure, but the lowest heat setting possible. Got all of our paints mixed up. Our black is the Deco Art Americana Lamp Ebony Black. The white, Deco Art Americana Snow Titanium White. And the white and the black is 15 ounces of the Deco Art Pouring Medium. Um, so it's 15 ounces of pouring medium. I did three ounces of paint and 0.5 ounces of water. So it's an extremely thin consistency. Because this is so big, we have a lot of paint that we need to move, so it needs to be thin. All right, our other colors are the Deco Arts Americana Outdoor Living Ladybug, Outdoor Living Gold, Media Fluid Acrylics Dioxide Purple, Media Fluid, oh, sorry, uh, Americana Ultramarine Blue. I was going to use this one and decided not to. The mixture ratios for the outdoor living and the ultramarine blue was five ounces of paint, one ounce, I'm sorry, five ounces of pouring medium, one ounce of paint, and 0.2 ounces of water. The outdoor living was four point, no, sorry, 5.2 ounces of pouring medium, 0.8 ounces of paint, and 0.2 ounces of water. And the fluid acrylics was five ounces of pouring medium and about 1.2 ounces of the dioxide purple and no water. Because this is already thin, we didn't need water. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move this stuff out of the way and we're gonna get started.
Just pushing these little wispies a little bit further so they go all the way to the end. Okay. I think that is it. We are going to go ahead and leave it just like this. So thank y'all very much for watching. I look forward to seeing everybody in part two. Thank you very much for watching. Have a blessed day and as always, God bless. Good morning, everybody. So uh, we are back. Everything is dried. It dried beautifully. No shifting um, and everything. So I'm really happy with the way it dried. We are back in my office and I had to change the setting on my phone to be able to fit this canvas in. Um, remember, this is a 24 by 36 level three, um, one inch deep canvas. And so to fit it on my phone, I had to change the setting. So it's kind of a zoom out setting. So it might look a little funny. Um, I have gone ahead and I have done the first couple of coats of Krylon spray lacquer on it. Um, I don't have a bottle here in the office. They're all outside in the studio, but, or a can, but it's the regular Krylon spray lacquer that I always use. This is a picture of what it looks like. And there's also a link down in the description. Um, if you want to purchase it on Amazon, I get mine at, uh, Lowe's. So we are going to go ahead and put our first coat of the Min Wax Polycrylic on it. We are using a two and a half inch soft bristle brush. Um, I can't find my sheath for this, but link is down in the description for this soft bristle brush. I get them at Home Depot. You can also get them on Amazon. And I believe I put a link down in the description as well to the polycrylic. Um, before we get to that, I did want to show you some really cool things. So as you know, I've gotten into sublimation and making coffee mugs and all of that. And so I was actually able to take um, a picture of this painting and I was able to actually sublimate it onto a coffee mug. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is actually this bottom half. And um, I still need to, to work on, you know, evening the, the words out like that one turned out well. 
but um, really, really cool that I can start doing this now. I've actually done it um, with coasters. So these are coasters that were made off of photos from another painting. So all kinds of options that can be done. Um, there's also an app. Um, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, mirror something. I'll put the link down in the description once I look at my phone and figure out what the, what the app is. But you can, Mirror Lab, that's what it's called, Mirror Lab. Um, you can actually take your paintings, and that's what this one is, and you can actually adjust them and pixelate them and do all kinds of cool stuff. So, again, this is the bottom half of this painting. Um, actually, it might be, I can't remember what I did with it. Anyways, um, and I was able to pixelate it and then take that image and actually put it on a mug. So, that's pretty cool. Um, all kinds of different options when it comes to sublimation and, um, and all that. So wanted to show y'all those, but we are going to go ahead and get the first coats on of the uh, polycrylic. So first thing is I'm going to kind of do a, a full coat and then I'm going to go around the edges and pull all the edges in, make sure I've got the edges. And then we're going to do long strokes to make sure everything is smoothed out. I do not water down my polycrylic. Um, I use it straight from the jar if I can get it open. Whew. I made sure to seal that. There we go. You're going to mix it up just a little bit. Altogether, we'll probably have about two to three coats of polycrylic on this. We will probably only do one together just to shorten up this video. Um, and then, of course, um, I will do the other couple of coats off camera. And then at the end of the video, we'll do the finished product. All right, let's go ahead and get this first coat on. Okay, we've got the first coat on. I normally wait um, about an hour or two between coats to uh, put the next one on. And other things you saw, I went around the edges to make sure that all of our sides were coated. And then also take a, just a foam brush when you're done and just run it along the base underneath your uh, canvas because that's gonna get any of your drips. Uh, polycrylic, when it dries dripping, it actually does not dry clear. It ha does have a milky white look to it. 
and um, you will see it and it will be bumpy and you'll have to sand it down before you put your back on your canvas. So make sure that you always um, get all of the drips off to the base of your canvas. Okay, that is it for this part. Um, I'm gonna put the next couple of coats on off camera. Exact same process, putting a nice um, layer on top, pulling your sides, doing smooth brush strokes to make sure everything is smooth and even, long strokes, and then making sure you take care of your sides. So um, with polycrylic, like I said, I don't thin mine down. The secret to polycrylic and not cracking, using a soft bristle brush, not a foam brush, put on your coats, and then multiple thin layers. Um, when you put it on really thick, that's where you get your cracking and your crazing. So I will put the next couple of coats on, and then when I come back, I will show you how I finish the backs of the canvas, and then we'll take a look at the finished product. See y'all soon. Hi. So we are back. Um, everything is dry. So this has three coats of polycrylic on it. Um, it has been, the last coat was put on about three hours ago, so it is fully dried. And we are going to go ahead and put our back on. So for the backs, I just use this. It is um, just brown painter's paper. I get it at Home Depot. I can get a massive roll of it for like $11. It's nice and thick. It's also what I use for shipping. Um, so it's a really good, um, sturdy uh, brown paper. So to hear it, I use this Weldwood contact cement and um, I'll show you how I put it on. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over. I did put some paper down to help protect the canvas um, from the workspace. So we are gonna flip it over and we actually have a really clean back um, because we didn't do a whole lot of tilting and touching and all that kind of stuff. The back is, is pretty clean. We're gonna take off these massive push pins that we used. Okay, so what I do is this is actually bigger than the frame actually needs to be. I glue it down first and then I flip it over and I actually just run an, an um, X-Acto knife across the, the uh, underneath side of it and that gives us a really good frame. Okay. So to start it off, and normally, um, there it is. So I will sign the backs of some of, of the canvases. Um, sometimes I just put the certificate of authenticity on there, but whenever I've got a black canvas like this one is, I'll actually sign the back of the canvas. Okay, but once we put our brown paper on and all that, I actually have certificates of authenticity that I made up that have the title of the artwork and when it was made and the signature and all that. And that will actually go on the brown paper on the outside. But we are gonna go ahead and get this started. So I just take the contact cement and uh, start at the top and then kind of walk my way down.
Okay, um, so once you get it all glued down, then I like to flip it over and let it rest on the frame for a little bit just to make sure you get good sealant, good seal on it. Okay. And while all that was drying, um, I hip checked an entire container of Minwax Polycrylic off of my paint table onto the floor and onto my carpet. And now I'm missing a section of my carpet. So we are going to let this dry for a little bit and then we are going to cut off the excess paper um, and finish everything up. Alrighty, it's been about 10 minutes. We are going to go ahead and remove our plastic and uh, cut the excess paper off. Close what's left of my polycrylic, which is not much. That was an expensive hip check. All right. Save this paper for the next painting that we do. Okay. So the reason that I do it this way is because I want to have a really nice solid covering on the back side of it. Just be very, very careful if you do do it this way um, so that you don't cut your canvas. So I just have an X-Acto knife here and very, very lightly, I just go along, see if I can move this where y'all can see it better. I just go along the painting and um, just cut off a little bit of the paper. All right, and once you're done, that is what the back of your canvas should look like. It's gonna be nice and clean um, all along the side, very, very close to the edge. And then, um, I don't wanna leave this on its face for too long. And the certificate of authenticity that I had made up for this one, um, I'm gonna have to print a new one. I just print them on sticker paper, but this was on top of the polycrylic and then ended up underneath the polycrylic when it hit my carpet. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a new one, but it's basically just a basic certificate of authenticity, um, the title of it, um, who it's by, my business logo, the title again, the year it was done, um, the signature and the date I authenticated. I normally don't fill these out and put them on the painting until I send them, until they are purchased um, and mailed off. The only exception to that will be when I go to shows. Then I will put them on there for the show. But that's it. 
And that is our finished painting. I will put it up on the wall, or actually I'll lean it up against the wall and get some photos of it for the end of the video. For hangers, because of it's this kind of painting, I don't attach a hanger to it because there's so many ways that you can display it. But I mail them um, two sawtooth hangers with the painting, with the instructions on how to put them in. Um, unless they request me to put it on a certain way. And sometimes I'll reach out to them and ask them if, if they have a way they want to display it and then I'll put it on beforehand. But if not, I just send it to them and they, they put it on themselves. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this um, helped you as you are getting into uh, doing the backs of your paintings and, and finishing them up. Uh, down in the description, all the paint colors used and everything that you need to know to recreate this painting. Um, also in the description, links to my Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. There's also a link down in the description if you'd like to help support my channel. Um, again, I want to thank you very much for watching, and as always, God bless.